Hi everyone here and around the world. On this 21st of February 2024, we have 116 countries tuning in tonight. And good news, we have broken through 261,000 subscribers on our way, we hope, to half a million. Subscribing doesn't cost you anything, but helps us at YouTube. So we appreciate your clicking on the subscribe and like buttons. UFOs are back in the news from Idaho to Washington to DC. This headline, have you seen this Boise UFO? We need answers was released on February 15th, 2024 from KIDO radio 1043 on the dial in Boise, Idaho where I grew up. And here is the actual video released with this 1043 KIDO headline that shows a bright object moving behind treetops and then it emerges very bright and very large with a small tail, seemingly too small to be a huge meteorite. It was seen and recorded the first week of February and if anyone in Boise, Idaho has additional video of this large, bright, unidentified aerial object, please email me at earthfiles at earthfiles.com. UFOs also made more headlines in the UK's dailymail.com yesterday on February 20th, 2024. Florida Congresswoman Anna Luna says, quote, she absolutely believes UFOs are not of human origin. After private briefings by military, Luna said further, quote, she and two other U.S. representatives went to Eglin Air Force Base on the Florida Panhandle, where they met pilots there who had come forward to say that the Air Force is covering up UAP activity and Congress needs to look into it. Representative Luna, quote, the Pentagon tried to initially cancel the first meeting effort, and then we got a meeting back on the books. We show up there, and we get in, and the base commander tried to tell us that we didn't have authorized clearance to look into and speak to some of the witnesses. You don't tell Congress that we don't have the authorized clearance, Luna said, especially members of the House Armed Services Oversight and Judiciary. If Congress is writing the bills to fund these programs, yet we don't have authorized access and oversight into investigating UAPs, then that's not necessarily something that happens in a free country, right? So we continue to push, close quote, Representative Luna. In addition to the mysterious UFOs, UAPs in the air and underwater, there are other interactions with humans that are linked to memory erasure and missing time, as well as to the worldwide bloodless, trackless mutilation of domestic and wild animals that have been linked allegedly to alien harvesting of sperm and eggs for genetic manipulation programs. And then there are the humans who have reported being paralyzed at night in their bed while non-human beings transport their bodies into a light beam that takes the paralyzed human up to a craft. And like surgeons in a hospital, the non-humans examine and probe the human bodies. And often the humans examined and probed are teenage females who have just started their menstrual cycle and are fertile. American plasma physicist John Brandenburg, PhD, and author of the 2015 book, Death on Mars, has linked radioactive particles in the Cydonia region of northern Mars to the explosion of two hydrogen bombs, leading him to ask, who were the bomb makers? And what do they want now with Homo sapien? Here is an excerpt from a recent February 13th, 2024 email Dr. Brandenburg sent to a large mailing list of people who investigate UFOs and the alien presence on Earth, quote. We are located almost dead center in what is called the local bubble in the Milky Way galaxy in the middle of the Orion arm. 
we are being visited by many different species, some very humanoid. One species, the greys, appears to dominate reports of abductions, hybridization, and animal mutilations. The greys appear to be creating a hybrid race with a human immune system resistant to earthly diseases in order to colonize this planet Earth. Dr. Brandenburg thinks the Greys' goal is to join and or replace humanity on Earth with alien-human hybrids. This past week, I talked with the author of a new book on Amazon entitled Without Consent, Taken by the Greys, released this month of February 2024 by Kay Hennessy. She is a Canadian who will be 68 in May 2024. The most traumatic year of her life was 1970 when she was 14 years old, just starting her menstrual cycle and finding herself waking up in the middle of the night unable to move, but able to see this very thin, six to seven foot tall, gray colored being at the foot of her bed. And one of the themes in your book is that the gray types have been one of the most associated with abductions of humans. Yeah. They seem to try to be invisible, literally shape-shifting, where people will see something, but then it looks very normal, pretend humans, pretend Earth environment while what is actually happening is a mind manipulation by the gray beings of the humans that they are abducting. I can tell you about one particular incident that happened to me one time that really shocked me. I had gone to the corner store to get some items, and the sun was shining. It was a bright day. It was warm. It was a beautiful summer afternoon. And I was walking home from the store. Way in the distance ahead of me, I saw what I thought was a dog crossing the road. And as I got closer to it, I could see it wasn't a dog. I didn't know what it was, but it was a weird-looking thing. I couldn't seem to focus my eyes on it. Everything else was fine, but I couldn't seem to focus my eyes on whatever this was. And it went across the road, and then as I got closer... I saw, it just stunned me because what I was seeing was a gray, one of the short grays. Mm -hmm. And the reason I couldn't see him very well was because he kept fading in and out of view. And it looked to me exactly like he was camouflaged with some kind of technology that was malfunctioning because at first I could see him clearly and then he would sort of be like a ripple effect and he would disappear and then he'd come back into view again. It was like that. A engineer from Sandia Labs in Albuquerque was driving on one of the freeways north of Denver, Colorado, and sees what he thinks are two boxcars by themselves on the open rail and pulls the car over thinking, oh my God, somebody's going to crash into this. And as soon as he thought that, both boxcars rise straight up vertically and are gone. And this kind of shape-shifting, pretend humans, pretend boxcars, is one of the main ingredients of how another intelligence or other intelligences interact on this planet, and they keep humans in the dark about their very presence, let alone that they are able to shape-shift into whatever they think the human will accept. Yeah, that's true. They are not only studying us, but they are studying our planet. Whatever their motives are, I don't know, but they are studying our planet. And what is the difference between the large black eye ones versus the ones with the all white eyes with black dots in the center? They looked identical to me, except for the eyes. They were both really tall. They both had pear-shaped faces, the gray skin, the huge, gigantic eyes. The only difference was one of them had tiny black dots, I think pupils, whereas the other one, his whole eyes were all black. 
that was the only difference I could see. Maybe one of them was wearing something over his eyes. I don't know. I have no idea. Were both six foot tall, thin? Yeah, the first time in my bedroom, that one was over six feet, about seven feet tall. And the one I saw in the craft, that one was probably about six feet. And they're thin? Yes, very thin. They look very frail, but they're not. And I wondered if you could explain your perspective as an abductee and as a person who has written the book without consent taken by the Greys, copyright 2024, and is available on Amazon.com. And for you now, with me on Earth Files YouTube channel, to explain what you see and sense is the main goal of the tall greys and how they work with other beings. From my experience, I think their agenda was to create hybrids. They used me to do that. I've seen three of them that were supposedly my children, or so they said. They used me many times to carry their progeny. They don't have any empathy for us at all. It's like we're just lab rats, and they use us that way. We're instruments of convenience that they can use to carry the embryos. What is your understanding about why these gray beings from someplace else in the universe would have a program on Earth in which they are genetically manipulating DNA in humans with their DNA, apparently, to create hybrids that will be carried by homo sapien females. What is the gray problem that they need human homo sapiens to carry their fetuses? Ah, that's a good question. I wish I could answer. I've wondered about that for decades, and I really don't know... It doesn't make sense to me because I've seen at least three hybrid children, and I've heard of many cases of other women meeting hybrid children. And yet, despite that, I've never heard anyone say that they had seen an adult hybrid. The only thing I've ever heard is that people have seen children hybrid. So my question is, where do they go? What happens to them? Why are they there? Why are they creating them? They're not working with the greys right here on Earth, interacting with humans. So what happens to them? The hybrids that I've seen and the hybrids that some other people have seen, they wouldn't blend in with human society. They have human characteristics, but not enough. Very sparse little tufts of hair, and they still have the really big eyes like the greys do. Wouldn't be inconspicuous in human society. So your hypothesis is that there is a genetic DNA manipulation here on the Earth that involves the gray genetic material and homo sapien material, but that you think that the product of those hybrids are being taken someplace else beyond the surface of Earth. That's my guess, yes. All of the abductions and all the things that happened to me were in that year, 1970, when I was 14 years old. After that, I didn't have, as far as I know, I didn't have any more abductions, not that I can remember, until about, I guess, about six years later, when I was 21. And I had one final abduction then. That was the time when I met the hybrid children. They were yours. That's what they told me, yeah. But I can't remember having any other abductions since then. And today, as we speak in 2024, with pressure now building on the planet to open up the fact that we're not alone in this universe, that there are many, many different types of intelligent entities from military and intel sources that have been whistleblowers, why do you think that we are now in 2024, soon to be in a decade that will end at 2030, with all kinds of hints and suggestions that something very, very serious is going to happen to the earth in this decade. 
that may precipitate the ETs having to intervene. Have you heard anything like that? Do you have any impression from vivid dreams or from telepathy about what is going to happen between humans, greys, and other ETs? I've never personally experienced anything that would suggest what you just said, some big change coming. I don't recall them ever telling me something like that, but I have had a feeling that things are going to come to a head sometime in the future, but I don't know in what way. I would assume that eventually they'll ever tell us about their existence because they have to. I mean, with technology going the way it is today, people have video cameras and binocular telescopes and all kinds of things. So they can't deny it forever. But as far as something coming to a head with the grays coming out, I think that will happen. I have an uneasy feeling. Uneasy, because you are afraid what will happen. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be good. In what way? My personal belief is I think they've been around forever. I think they've been around since people were living in caves and probably before then. And I think that they've been dabbling with our DNA since then. And they have an agenda for that. What that is, I don't know. But I think that puts us in the arena of like being a zoo or a lab. We're all being experimented on. That's a very uneasy feeling for me. And back in 1998, many of the questions and issues and seeming strife that's endless on the earth now seemed to be in discussion in 1998 when I was finishing and getting my third book out, Glimpses of Other Realities, Volume 2, High Strangeness. And on page 355, I wrote these words which seem today that these endless echoes of the same concerns continue, quote, perhaps the non-human intelligences which watch this planet Earth see our future as a species hanging in a balance and will not allow humans to destroy the Earth. Perhaps that is why we see their increasing presence in human affairs despite aggressive government efforts to keep them under wraps year after year after year, even now, as there have been efforts by people in Congress to open up the truth. The pushback from JSOC and the Pentagon is heavy. On September 22, 1996, a charming thing happened in a strange way, at least historically. The image of a gray being holding a Starbucks cup of coffee was put all over the planet. And when I saw it for the first time, I thought maybe that's where this is going to head it, that this is the concept of another intelligence among us that has shifted from fear to curiosity to maybe even one of the guys on planet Earth with humans Grays, tall, blondes, Nordics, blues, the list goes on and on. And that as it shifts from fear to curiosity, to maybe even being one of the guys on Earth, maybe this is how one handshake begins and the next revolution, and that maybe all of us together, that we can change it from feeling as dangerous as Kay described, and so many feel that we're headed toward huge danger. I really am convinced that the human mind concentrating together on a change can make a difference. And in that regard, Ian, I would love to know uh, what some of the questions and comments are from our audience in uh, And hope our grapefruit here of your microphone will keep working. Okay, thank you, Linda. Uh, Okay, well, we've got quite a lot of people chipping in with their own experiences, their own grey abductions, etc. So I'm just going to read a few of those to you. Christopher Alexander says, My memories of greys confuse me. 
I never remember the events where I was with them, but I have sent I have sensed memory of touching their skin suits and I know instantly which depictions are accurate to what I saw. I've got a, another um, question here from Bible Truth who says, is there any evidence testimony that the tall greys are androids? And I, I'll just add this one last thing because they're all linked. Tom the man says one memory he has of a grey is that he touched his arm and it felt like gears were running on underneath, like he was a bio-robot of some kind. Yes, I've heard that before. And Ian, those are excellent quotes. And the, the first thing that came to mind is that the whistleblower that I uh, started communicating with four years ago, who has a very strong aerospace background, he's the one who insisted and told me the true progenitor grays, the ones involved with genetic manipulation on this planet going back at least 278 million years, are tall, six, seven, eight feet, extremely thin, gray skin. They wear gray skin suits, uh, as the other ETs do too, but on them it's gray. That's why humans have always thought that they are all gray. And they may have different colors on parts of their legs or their arms, but they are wearing these skin suits that protect them. But here is the uh, advantage or the help of being able to talk to somebody who has worked with the tall whites and knows about these ETs and says, it is the tall, thin, progenitor grays that were here long, long, long ago. And that the whole evolutionary pattern of a lot of artificial intelligence being in the small grays is linked to the tall, progenitor, thin grays. And in uh, talking with Kim Hennessy and hearing that what she originally saw in her four, year of 14, being 14, in 1970, that the, it was the only year in her life that she had, but there were several. And she saw the different tall ones, but they were so similar, except for those eyes, kind of a reversal. And it made me wonder. I would have said that even in uh, 1970, that it would not be the tall, thin progenitor grays that were running things or in charge. But she has made me rethink that when you go back to that, that decade of the 70s, that's when the animal mutilations began to spike everywhere. That was when people began hearing a lot about human abductions. There was just a lot more headlines about aspects of interacting with a variety of non-humans who have their own agendas. And that our government, since World War II, has been struggling to understand the agendas of a mixed group of different types. And if the progenitor greys have been here at least 278 million years and that they were in conflict with Nordics and with reptilians, then what is happening today in 2024 going forward may be truly an existential revolutionary point where a lot of things are going to change. And what our government is trying to do in opening this up, if we could just start getting real truth out, it might be that it would be like letting a steam valve off to so many people who are, they're either living in fear or they don't understand what's going to happen. And it's not fair, I don't think, to the whole human population to not be talked to in straight language about what the reality is of which ETs from which planets, how many are here and out there, and that it goes on and on exactly like that incredible James Webb telescope photograph of those galaxies that some astronomers have estimated might indicate that there were three trillion galaxies in this universe alone. Wow. Okay, Ian. Okay, we've got also 
people are talking about the uh, shape-shifting aspect of yeah. these entities. Uh, we've got... Um, uh, let me just, just find the, those comments. Yeah, it's, I can't explain. So something interesting for everyone. The most common reported shape-shifting the greys do is appear as clowns, especially to children. And I remember that um, we had uh, the uh, one abductee, uh, Terry. Was it Terry? Um, Terry Lovelace, who told us about the... He thought they were like um, like little monkeys. And wow. one Mexican abductee that I worked with actually saw them as, uh, as mariachis. Right. So, yeah... They, they appear to people uh, as a cultural, uh, let's say, icon or representative that they may feel more comfortable with rather than the, and in their own, own form. And the greys, it seems to me, over the last 40 years of trying to understand this complex hall of mirrors with a quicksand floor, it is the greys that have often been associated with shape-shifting or coming out of the air, or dissolving. Uh, uh, moving in strange ways that uh, the human doesn't know what they're looking at and that that shape-shifting ability of the greys means that they are using their minds to interact with our minds and make us see what they want. And I would imagine that when that was discovered uh, in World War II and definitely in the Vietnam War where there were many reports of our men in jungles seeing something that would shape shift and often it was something that might have been human looking that changed into a standing up alligator and that would impl imply that maybe all of the current other intelligences interacting with earth have that ability to interact with our mind and make us see as well as generate fields and holograms and technology that humans up until the last 10 to 15 years, we didn't have around us. And now we are moving rapidly into what seems to me an environment and a landscape that is very much like maybe what the AI of ETs live in and produce and project so that they are always in control of their environment. Yeah, Linda, uh, we've got a, a question from Moonbird related to that. He says, what are your thoughts, the theory that human AI is being manipulated by non-human AI to facilitate their biological and technological presence here? I asked a physicist that uh, a month ago, and he said, the, th the thing is that if we're dealing with extraterrestrial intelligence and there are a million or two or three or four beyond us, they have AI, but what they have in AI and their ability to move dimensions, which is moving point to point throughout a vast cosmos, projecting holograms that humans cannot tell. Uh, the famous story in uh, Tucson of uh, the person who saw a saguaro cactus and thought it was a real cactus until something happened and it shimmered and then it completely went invisible, that that kind of technology is what we're beginning to move into with everybody uh, wondering if AI is now going to be increasingly dependent upon, when do we reach the day or the year when humans really do not know what the truth is in front of them at any level? It bothers me. Uh, we've got Parsi X in, and he's actually corresponded with you and myself. I spoke to him at the weekend as well. He says the agenda is greys and reptilians don't have a soul and do soul transfer procedures and place the souls in hybrids to place on Earth to do their bidding. That is a hypothesis that has been out there for uh, such a long time, going all the way back to my animal mutilation investigations. And... I think it is still confusing, not just to me, but to the people who have been abducted and have seen the big rooms with the translucent or transparent to, uh, sort of tubes, the round tubes, the drawings are in my work. Um, and in them are humans, extraterrestrials of a variety of different types, 
And in the many, many interviews and discussions that I've had with abductees who have seen these tubes with bodies in them in which there's light shining from the top of the tube and the bottom of the tube and whatever the non-human is that's giving them, guiding them and showing them and communicating mentally, it always comes down to it is vital that the soul remain with certain containers for a period of time without explaining what that goal is or what would happen if that didn't occur. As if there is some huge, gigantic, cosmic challenge to provide some kind of storage of souls in cycles related to whatever the body connection to the soul is. But I have never personally heard anybody in the whistleblower level or the government level say we know that one of the biggest agendas that the non-humans have has to do with processing information from the souls of Homo sapiens. And that implication has been that we are a manipulated species. We have been brought into being over 278 million years of multiple extraterrestrial manipulation of DNA uh, in already evolving primates. And we are a species that has been created. Well, are we now at some line in the sand where whatever we were created to be originally by how many we'll call them the progenitor ETs, perhaps having many different experiments on many different planets, and we're just one. But when, when I have talked in the last three to four years with a different group of people who have been working in aerospace, and they have been working on uh, high-end technologies, and they don't say that they know for a fact that this ET and this ET are in control of what's happening on Earth. They don't talk like that, but they say that they have worked with extraterrestrials in the tall, white, and the Nordic categories in which there seems to be great concern about other life civilizations and what those civilizations of extraterrestrials might end up doing to Earth. As if Earth is the big thing. That's, the, that's what everybody wants to try to protect. With different life forms that have come through eons on the surface and inside and inside uh, moons in our solar system and beyond. And that if the big enchilada is trying to keep Earth as a laboratory, as a place for being able to mix and match genes and create all kinds of life, why wouldn't there have been more genetic manipulation to make us a species that would have reverence for life? And right now, we seem to be repeating crises that have been on the earth before with humans, where war and destruction are dominating. And part of me says, I wonder if the original progenitor experimenters would help us learn how to tap into soul energy so that we might have longer lives with deeper embedment with those souls and that information that some of the progenitors have told other people in the abduction syndrome, that one of the big keys of their big projects is this pairing of the soul with certain types. And it's it's so complex, it's so faceted, 
But any way that you look at it, and I really welcome your questions and comments on this, we are at some pivotal, pivotal moment in all of time of this planet and this solar system that going forward it feels like we're either going to get out of 2030, the end of this decade, better, functioning better, loving each other more, not fighting, hope interfacing directly with extraterrestrials that are here anyway. This planet has extraterrestrials. They're based all over, inside, in the moons, everywhere. And that if we would finally move out to where the truth is, then maybe other non-humans who really do care about soul and recycling uh, souls for the whole purpose of extending consciousness, as Roger Penrose says, through the infinite cycles of time. And those words by Roger Penrose, I think, are as important as that other sentence in the Nag Hammadi, that there is the thought that dwells in the light. And if humanity <clears throat> could get into a relationship with the power, the consciousness, in those concepts, I just don't know how we would be destroying babies and hospitals and all the horror that is going on our planet now. And uh, I hope you feel a pressure to try to ask for the infinity to help us on this planet in so many directions. And if we would be introduced perhaps to extraterrestrials, that, that it, it was in the idea that they're going to try to help us, that might be positive. But it's so clear that we humans really don't fully understand what the big picture is. And I throw it over to all of you that are here and who have heard Kay and others talk about what they've been exposed to. What all have you been exposed to about the actual purposes of different extraterrestrials interacting with humans and Earth life on this beautiful blue planet that we need to help it survive as well as ourselves. Okay, Ian. Yeah, it would seem from the experiences that people are relating in the chat this evening that people are involved with multiple uh, uh, races and multiple agendas here but there is another theme in all of this aims for pod for beginners podcast says my understanding is gray's work for more advanced beings like mantids or even nordics and uh, that reminds me i was speaking at the weekend with another abductee who despite having about 26 conscious memories of his abductions he said there was a, a mantid being that was behind the whole plan uh, that he felt um so Perhaps you could address that as well. I had a similar discussion at Conscious Life Expo, the conference that you and I and, and so many were at last weekend. And it was started with my question being introduced to somebody who said that the prime intelligence in their life was the praying mantis. And I said, can you explain... The praying mantis comes up in my work, mostly in the half dozen abductees who were introduced to the tubes with different bodies, human varieties of ETs in them. But it was a praying mantis that seemed to be in control. And in one of the cases, the abductee, a female, is standing, is being brought by greys to like a room where there's some technology in there and there's this big praying mantis and the praying mantis says to the female who was young then, a teenage female, you will be translated into the light here. And when I 
did the first recording with her that was transcribed and is in Glimpses of Other Realities volume, part of it in part one, but a lot in part two. She had no idea what that meant. And she was very intelligent. And she probably talked to me as deeply as anybody I've ever talked to about being a teenager and being in a craft and seeing all these bodies and having the praying mantis tell her that she was going to be translated into the light and that she knew that her body was not strong, that she had had uh, childhood diseases that had left her weak. And she ends up with not the praying mantis, but a gray who seems to take over for the praying mantis comes into one of these rooms with all of the tubes with all the different humans and ETs in them. And now this gray says he's going to demonstrate for her, it's all telepathic, there's no noise, it's all telepathic, that he's going to demonstrate for her why they have brought her there, what is going to happen, and the gray takes his long forefingers and does an arc motion down into the, the man's chest and comes up with a heart and there's no blood. It's all like holographic images, but somehow this is allegedly showing her what's really going on in the biological world with this man. And that it would be necessary for them to keep her from California going because it was vital in her case that her soul and her body stay together, as if implying that it was more important in some people than others. And she remembered at that point, she said, I was sitting across from her doing the recording and suddenly her arms she like she was reaching out to me but in the air Linda Linda whose arms whose hands whose fingers are these I watched I watched the man move in from the tube that's what they did to me what does translation into the light mean? Am I different? Did they do something that would heal me? I really don't know. Can you tell me? And I've heard her words haunted and echoing in my mind off and on ever since doing that. The recording with her was in 1990, I believe. And those are like the cryouts to me of the whole human population on earth now and in the past in so many cycles. What is happening? We are presented religious perspectives about being in an infinite universe in which there are other dimensions that have deep concern and care about us as a life form that has been evolving through many, 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 many types, many versions, and to hear her voice, Linda, whose arms are these? Now some people say, you shouldn't report that. It scares people. I feel exactly the opposite. We must report these kinds of communications with a variety of advanced intelligences in order to even begin to understand at all what is this life, biological life experiment, Homo sapien sapien. And the truth is that if you ask her, are you afraid? That's not what she will know. She wants to know the truth. I would like to know the truth, the whole biggest picture. Are we in a universe that was created by another universe in another dimension and is in fact being projected, which would make it a hologram, 
And could it be a hologram that its whole goal was to teach souls? Uh, and we've talked about this before, about the white and the black and the yin and the yang. And we're at such a strange, to me, a strange juncture on the earth where the idea that there is no guarantee now in any 24-hour period in any part of most any city on planet earth now where somebody with a gun is going to open up bullets on people that they have never seen until that moment. Why is this happening? I really hope that as we get on with 2024 and some people in the last three weeks have said to me they think it will all be over in terms of the headline, that it does have to happen in the next at least two years. And I say, why does it have to happen in the next two years? And the answer I always get is, it's too classified. What's too classified to tell the whole planet the truth? Because of whatever is coming, if it's global and revolutionary, shouldn't we all know? And I understand it's a pendulum. You ask the questions that seem to be credible and realistic to people living on a planet, eight billion, probably too many, and then it all, the answer always goes to, it's all too serious, it's all too big, it's all too great, it's, it, it's about other dimensions, Nobody, one, no one will understand, so don't talk about it. Just let it happen. Well, for those of you who might be there, because I get a lot of communications from people in military and intel who do watch this show, and then they communicate in a safe way, and at least I learn a little bit from that, and I greatly appreciate that. What do you all, at this point, as we are now getting toward March of 2024, are any of you having really, really vivid dreams? The kind of vivid dreams where you wake up and you have information and it's just downloading into you, and you can't even see the room. I would really like to hear from some of you if that's been happening. Um, I'm going to transition to Ian, but I really think this is the single most important period because this is before something else that's coming. And I pray every day that it's going to be more positive than negative. But I would love to know what you all are getting. Okay, Ian. Uh, Linda, I don't know if you can still hear me. I, I think the audio is cutting out a little bit here. Can you hear me okay? Oh, it has been beautiful. Okay, no, let's go ahead. I need to take care of a few things of business, first of all. Uh, I want to acknowledge some more super chats here this evening from Moonbird, Terry, and Louise. Thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. Are, are, you, um, are, you, are you saying you've got a problem, or are, are you going to... Continue on. No, I'll continue on until we get cut off. Okay. That's fine. All I right. wanted to say, you mentioned about the contact, the Conscious Life uh, Expo. Yeah, we had a great time. And I want to remind people about your next upcoming conference oh, yes. attendance, which is in Sedona. Yes. So I'm going to post a link in the chat here. Tell us about it. We're going to be under the umbrella of Ascension. And I agree with that in the concept that some of the uh, most profound questions that I wish we all, could all answer is if we are evolving and like a chrysalis and a caterpillar that becomes a butterfly, that's what I hope. And that the word ascension, raising the frequencies of what you're thinking, what you're doing, with the idea that it could possibly have an impact on all of the frequencies that this planet is in and end what seems like a barbaric uh, approach 
to keeping um, a planetary intelligence dumb and blind about something that can be dangerous, it might be not dangerous, it might be uh, educational, it might not be. There are so many opposites of what could be happening. But until we're told the truth, we're living in a strange shadow. So that is, at Ascension, the subjects I'm going to be doing. It's one of my favorite programs with updates. And I call it From Brains to Galaxies. The key is frequencies. And it really, really is. So for those of you tonight who end up and can go to Sedona, it's beautiful. Um, it should be uplifting. Go ahead, Ian. Yeah, I've posted the links in the chat and the links as well are below our uh, in, the, in the description below the video tonight and also on our website. I also want to remind people that this episode and all of our episodes of Earth Files are available as a podcast for downloading and playing in your car and as you go. Yeah, and I can add one more thing. The reason that my voice is low is that at Conscious Life Expo last weekend, um, it was fantastic. The uh, crew from Prometheus, who does Ancient Aliens, was there covering one of my presentations, and they followed down into the floor and the hallways. And I felt like with the energy that I had hugs from, it felt like a thousand of you. And uh, somewhere along the line, I picked up some bug. <laughs> and I am much better today than I was two or three days ago. Um, and, but that's part of going to conferences that we have to weigh uh, should we wear masks all the time at conferences still or not? Well, today I tested for COVID and it was negative. So it's more like a, a cold. And, and I am so grateful that there were so many people at Conscious Life Expo that I got to talk to in person about your experiences and your perspective on what is happening on this planet. Some of the discussions were incredible. And we'll have more at Ascension in Sedona. Absolutely, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Uh, so I've posted the dates and times uh, of the conference in there. Alan Steinfeld is in the chat tonight, and he's also added some detail. Thank you, Alan, for that. March the 8th to the 10th, Sedona Ascension Retreat. Uh, Linda, I need to ask you a question from Ram. He says, can you ask Linda if my UFO dreams are connected to anything? And if she has dreams about UFOs or beings, uh, it is a, a, an aspect that comes up time and time again that many people have experiences that they just write off as dreams, but the dreams are actual real experiences with ETs. That's why I ask that I would like to hear from people who might be having, and when I say a vivid dream, there's a tremendous difference in the category of what I've learned over the last 45 years, interviewing at least 3,000 people, that there's dreams that is natural to the brain. And then there are vivid dreams when you get to the human abduction syndrome, in which people will say, it, I, I was in another world. And when I opened my eyes, I was still in that world. And it takes some time for them to realize that they are actually in bed. But the vividness of the dream takes over the reality of their mind, their eyes, their ears. Many people, I have had incredible discussions at that level, and that's what we mean vivid dreams. In those vivid dreams, I have had vivid dreams about the government with a gun chasing me. Uh, that's probably been one of my most frequent. And I suppose a part of me resents it, in a country that is supposed to be a government of, by, and for the people, and all I have tried to do for half a century is investigate and report the facts and the truth. Now, there are people in government, in aerospace, in medicine, who are right now at the front line of trying to deal with whatever it is that is supposed to happen before 2030 that is going to be something like the first real crack of real truth on this planet to humans 
about other life in the universe. Will it come through their finally opening up the headline, that Trappist one system? Yeah, there's a helicopter coming over right now. <laughs> you'll, you'll probably hear it. <laughs> Can you hear it? Yeah. Uh, well, I pray that it's not a, a fight for life, and I hope that that was not a helicopter having uh, some person hurt. It could be. The other was, I was being light about the helicopters that the government uses. But the, the dreams, I think for, for a lot of people in the abduction syndrome, the dreams have been the main part of communication from other beings. And it's been going on for a very long time. But every decade, year, decade, where there have been government counterings, there's no UFOs, there's no ETs, it's nonsense. Finally, we're at what feels like a time where some people in Congress are honestly trying to open up the truth. And we're still seeing internecine warfare between the Pentagon and JSOC and about Grush is lying or Grush is not lying, uh, the whistleblower. And from everything I know, Grush is telling absolutely the truth and has a billion other things he could tell. So if dreams are the way that it's coming to you, as a lot of people do dream journals. And I have found in my own personal life that the really vivid dreams that you wake up and, and it's still there. I've hap had that happen several times. I have always ended up recognizing something from that dream to something that happens. But the one thing I have never done is I never really talk about the details of anything much that I have seen or are seeing. So sometimes I think it is better actually to keep the information it gives it power to yourself. And I realize that's a contradiction to doing the Earth Files YouTube channel and wanting to have a place where all of you can honestly communicate with me and I will be as honest as I can possibly be in replies and bringing those of you who, like Kay, you may have experiences that you feel that you would really like to share with uh, other people, but you would rather do it through uh, just an audio voice, uh, please get in touch with me. And for those of you in the military, retired or active now, I get such fascinating three or four or five sentences from many of you. And I would love to flesh out some of your own experiences with encountering other beings lights, technologies that can shapeshift. I think out of tonight, and I think that Kay Hennessy would agree with me, that one of the themes when you come to the investigation of non-human intelligences, if there is one dominant theme, shapeshifting, mental telepathy control, which means that the non-humans have the ability to make humans see, hear, think, a whole bunch of things that might not even be there. And the importance I've always placed on this is this is a way that the extraterrestrials cover up. And if they're covering up, what are they covering up? And how do we know, even JSOC, even the Pentagon, how do we know what is presented to us as here's the absolute 24 karat gold truth? Isn't another facet of the non-human intelligences manipulating human impression of them for something that they want. 
and that what is it that all the non-humans want and what is it that humans need and there we have I think what's involved to the end of this decade and I'm rooting for I hope Homo sapien sapien finally gets so much truth so much truth that they would never ever ever want to kill another human on that note thank you Ian thank you Eric thank you Alan thank you everybody uh, I I feel like there's both excitement and tension around this timeline and if reaching out to me through letters proton mail sending me a audio cassette in a box whatever you're comfortable with please do because there I don't think there's ever been a more important time for those of us trying to tell the truth to do so with support from as many people who are having experiences that are evidentiary that you have hopefully DD-214s to show what your military career was even if you have to be called John Smith we should be able to continue these dialogues with as much detail as we possibly can and I look forward to seeing a lot of you in Sedona and talking about the revolution after what will be happening what how do we get into a positive, positive frequency with beings that we still are being denied information about. It's an exciting time if it just weren't so violent among humans on our planet now. And with that, I wish you an agape hug and I'll see you next week. I have a really special program next week. Turn on closed captions for YouTube videos by clicking the white CC button on the lower right. The default language for Linda's videos is English. If you would like to see the captions in another language, click on the white settings button next to the CC button. Select subtitle CC and then select auto translate. I don't have to put them in select a language uh, bind them anywhere they love and the captions will now appear in that language sort of gone through and they will hold their heads I never had a cat do that before and they'll pull against the comb helping me get out snarls and I think it's the best they've ever been